morning and welcome to Distance Learning 101. I'm Greg Ellis. Today we are joined by joiner Cherie Demoran. And Cherie, thank you for taking the time to come and teach us a little bit about math and reading and yes. how we can put them together today. Thank you so much for having me. All right, well, let's dive in. Um, you, what grade What grade level do you teach? I teach second grade, second so that grade. means I teach all the subjects. <laughs> oh, wow, that's fun. Never a dull moment. Yeah. So today uh, you, you told us we're going to be learning about math and reading and how the two go together. Mm -hmm. So before we completely get in, kind of explain that so that what your class, hopefully they're watching and parents, will get out of this lesson today. Okay, um, mainly it's just a way that we can use something that we've learned in reading to then transfer that over to math. And we're gonna be using a Venn diagram today, as you can see behind me, um, to compare and contrast two different things. So in reading, we're gonna be comparing two different stories. And then in math, we're gonna be comparing two different numbers. I, I gotta admit, I'm extremely intrigued. Uh, like most kids, I grew up with the three little pigs. And now you, you, you questioning my childhood, the true story of the three little pigs, which I've never heard of. So I am really excited about the lesson to see how I've been lied to my entire life with this. So let's dive right in. What you got for us today? All right. So first, we're just going to, I'm not going to read you the three little pigs because most people know that one. Right. So I'll help you let me retell that. Um, we know the three little pigs, it's three brothers and it's time, mom tells them it's time to go out into the world. And so one of them builds their house out of straw, the next one builds his house out of sticks, and then the third brother builds his house out of bricks. Well, then here comes the big bad wolf, and he is trying to get in their house, and the good old saying, I'll huff, I'll puff, I'll blow your house down, that happens with the house of straw, then he runs to his brother's house, happens with the house of sticks, then both of those brothers run to the house of bricks, and what happens with that one? It doesn't go down. It doesn't go down, oh, exactly. <laughs> um, do you remember what happens, though? What do the brothers do? You're going to have to fill in <laughs> Um, I don't the, know if I've ever got past the huff and puff part. <laughs> the wolf ends up trying to go down the chimney, and they have a big pot of boiling water waiting on him, and that's how that story ends. So now we're going to look at the true story of the three little pigs, and a lot of the time we use this um, to teach point of view because it's told from the wolf's point of view. This would be the wolf telling the story. But today we're going to look at it with comparing and contrasting. But before we start that, remember that compare is to tell how two things are the same, and when we contrast things, that's when we tell how two things are different. So just keep that in mind. So you're telling me Three Little Pigs was fake news, or one of them's fake news, is that right? It's up to you to decide. <laughs> All right, everybody knows the story of the Three Little Pigs, or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. So remember, this is the wolf talking. It's always two sides, right? Exactly. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think you were big and bad too. <laughs> but like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. Are you ready? I am ready. <laughs> Way back in Once Upon a Time Time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold. I ran out of sugar. So he had a cold and then he ran out of sugar for his cake. I see where this is going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now this neighbor was a pig, and he wasn't too bright either. He had built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind would build a house of straw? So of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into someone else's house, so I called, little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. I was just about to go home without the cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. Then my nose started to itch. I felt a sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed and I snuffed. Is this where you thought it was going? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I sneezed a great sneeze. 
and down went the house of straw. <laughs> and you know what? That whole darn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig, dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole time. It seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there in the straw, so I ate it up. <laughs> Think of it as a big cheeseburger just lying there. I probably wouldn't have passed that up either. <laughs> I was feeling a little better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar, so I went to the next neighbor's house. This neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much. He had built his house of sticks. I rang the bell on the stick house. Nobody answered. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back, go away, wolf. You can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. I huffed and I snuffed and I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze. And you're not going to believe it, but this guy's house fell down just like his brother's. When the dust cleared, there was the second little pig, dead as a doornail. Wolf's honor. Now, you know, food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open, so I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling a little better, and I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have been the brains of the family. He had built his house of bricks. I knocked on the brick house. No answer. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you know what that rude little porker answered? Get out of here, wolf. Don't bother me again. He's probably getting mad at this point. Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar, and he wouldn't give me even one little cup for my dear sweet old granny's birthday cake. What a pig. I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake when I felt my cold coming on. I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed once again. Then the third little pig yelled, and your old granny can sit on a pen. <laughs> <laughs> Those mean pigs. <laughs> now, I'm usually a pretty calm fella, but when somebody talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. When the cops drove up, of course I was trying to break down this pig's door. And the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. The rest, as they say, is history. The news reporter found out about the two pigs I had for dinner. They figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting, so they jazzed up the story with all of that huff and puff and blow your house down, and they made me the big bad wolf. That's it, the real story. I was framed. But maybe you could loan me a cup of sugar. So in, there, in this comparison, there was a lot of contrast. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Now, I always have to ask, which side do you think is true? I always go with the original. <laughs> I agree, but I, you would be surprised as to how many of the students like this story they, better. They take the wolf side. Yes. It's very creative. It I, is. I appreciate Mr. Wolf uh, coming in and trying to give his side of the story. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm a lawyer, I'm not buying it. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so now that's when we would go to our Venn diagram and we would tell how these two stories were the same and then how they were different. Now, do you remember where we write where they're the same? Yes. Well, one, there's three little pigs. The houses are the same. Um, where do I write that on my Venn diagram? Oh, uh, we're going to do it over here? In the middle, In where the they're middle. The, same. Oh, the same. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> All right, so tell me what you said again. All right, so there were three pigs. Three pigs in both of them. We had a wolf. So the same characters. Same characters. We had uh, we had the same three type of houses. Exactly. Straw. Sticks, straw and brick. Sticks. And brick. And then two of the three houses were destroyed by <clears throat> ever how you want to put it. Exactly. I, I guess that's where we start that that's where the comparisons end. Exactly. I must have missed something there. <laughs> We might think of something as we keep going. Okay. All right, so now let's talk about how they're different. So this side would be the original Three Little Pigs, and then okay. this side would be the true story of the Three Little Pigs, the wolf okay. side. Um, so let's first talk about the reason why he was going out in the first place. To get a cup of sugar. Because Which one was that? Uh, uh, well, The true the, story. The true so story, this yeah. side, 
the wolf said he was just borrowing a cup of sugar. For Granny's birthday. Cake. Exactly. But then over here. I'll let you answer. <laughs> I, I don't want to. Some stories say he was just going to find dinner <laughs> to eat them. Yeah, All right. Of, of which he did in there as well. He did eat two of them. He did eat two of them, exactly. And really, he ended up eating, yeah, he eat, ate two of them in this one. Um, all right, now we can, what's another difference? Uh, the, uh, obviously, the ending. The ending. Um, so how did this one end? Uh, well, the wolf fell into the pot of boiling water. And over here. And over here he was just arrested. <laughs> exactly. Arrested and framed, arrested in his opinion. And, and he made front page news. See? Front page news. <laughs> All right. Well, that was quick. Don't knock me on this. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to... We're going to carry this over into math now. Oh, boy. Math. Yay. My favorite <laughs> subject. All right, this is Distance Learning 101. We'll be right back here on ABC WTVA. Welcome back to Distance Learning 101. I'm Greg Ellis, and today I'm joined by Miss Demoran from Joiner, second grade teacher. And boy, the first segment was really interesting as we learned the new version of the Big Bad Wolf. And uh, I guess I'm still just... I'm traumatized by this, uh, <laughs> of all this new uh, story. I can't telling. believe you've never heard that. I've never <laughs> heard of that. It just blows my mind. And now you're telling me that Cinderella has a different uh, version out. I tell you what, I, <laughs> I wasn't prepared for this this morning. So now we've read uh, Contrast and Compare, and now we're going to apply that to math somehow. And I'm really intrigued by this. Exactly. So, so first, we're just going to start out by looking at some place value. So we're going to start with... In my place value, you mean... Um, tell, so we'll get into that. <laughs> so we'll start with like this number 642. So you take each place and give it a name. So remember, this is your One. ones place. Ten. This would be your tens. And this is your hundreds. So that really... Each of these are a separate number. Okay. Even though it's 642, that 6 in the hundreds place, is the value is 600. A 4 in the tens place, the value would be 40. A 2 in the ones place, the value is 2. Okay. So you have your place, and that holds their value. So if we had an 8 in the hundreds place, the value would be 800. Right. All right, so this, just using our digits, 642, we call that standard form. Okay. That's how... Everybody writes their numbers. We're used to standard form. But there's also different ways to write that number. Same number, just three other ways. So expanded form, that's when we say we take the number and we pull it apart. So we use those place values that we just talked about, and we write it that way. So a six in the hundreds place would be 600 40. plus 40, four in the tens place, plus 2. So if you wanted to add up 600 plus 40 plus 2, you would get 642. That's just expanded. Pull it apart. And since it's all plus, we'll go left to right. Um, stay in order. Exactly. We about that in one of our other lessons. <laughs> order of operation. Order of operations, yes. All right, then we have word form. And it's exactly what you think it is. You write it in words. And I always tell my students, write it how you say it. Write it how you say it. We'll go through and we'll say 642. First word, six. Write six. Hundred. That's one they want to skip a lot because they don't see it. <laughs> Forty. Two. Six hundred forty-two. How about then our base 10 blocks, and I like to call this draw it out. Okay. And that's when you use, and I think you've learned about this in yeah. another lesson, <laughs> um, you use your base 10 blocks where for the hundreds, we use our large squares. So I would draw six of those. 
four, I mean our tens, four tens, our sticks, and then two ones. 642. So these are all the same number. They're just all written different ways. Means the same thing. And you can do that with any number. So now we're going to take our 642, and I've written another number here, 462, and compare and contrast those two numbers. Okay. So let's first look at ways that they're the same. Let's compare them. Okay. What's something that you see is the same about these two numbers? They both end in two. Okay, so they have a two in the ones the place. One. So the value of that two would be just two. Just two. Two in the ones place, so the value would be two. Now what the order's different, but they have two of the same numbers, the six and the four. All three. Or all three. All yeah. three same <laughs> digits, yes. So they use the same digits, which is two, four, and six. And those are also all even numbers. Even numbers. <laughs> we could go there with that. Um, do you see anything else that's the same? Oh, that's a trick question and a half. I, <laughs> I don't, but I'm sure there is. They're both three-digit numbers. Both three-digit numbers. All right, so now we can talk about ways that they're different. Now, the one that sticks out to you is probably the two. The overall the, value is different. The overall value, good. Um, and we'll we'll get there at the end, but the hundreds and the tens place, obviously right. those are swapped. Yes. So in this one, 642, there's a six in your hundreds place. which that value would be 600. And over here, you four. have a four in your hundreds place. So the value would be 400, exactly. All right, and then for 642, you have a four in your tens place. So that value would be 40, and you have a Six in your tens place. You're so color coordinated. It's impressive. You know how to go back and forth. You have to be. <laughs> That's that teacher uh, yeah. mentality. And so that value would be 60. So then after we do this, we can easily look, and you probably remember the alligator mouth when you compare two numbers. The alligator wants to eat yeah. the bigger number. So looking at these two numbers, which one would the alligator want to eat? The alligator is the bigger number. Right. Wants to eat the bigger, to eat number. the bigger number, yes. So 642 is the bigger number. Because it has a 6 in your hundreds right. place. And this one has a 4 in the hundreds place. So yes, our alligator would want to eat that number. So we would say that 642 is greater than 462. So by a difference of 180? Yes. <laughs> but you there, <laughs> we don't usually get that far. <laughs> So this is how we can take what we learned in reading and transfer that over to math, just using the same Venn diagram. And you're still comparing and contrasting, right. which is the skill that we were learning. You're just using numbers instead of books. And making it fun. And exactly. There's so much comprehension in this as well. I, I love this lesson. Um, we've had several math lessons, and I'm, I'm intrigued with every one. So... How long does it take, how, like if you're teaching your classes, obviously they start off, they're not going to get that at the beginning. How long does it usually take them to grasp all of this? Um, well, luckily we have been teaching this usually right after Christmas. Okay. And so by that point, they kind of already have a grasp on it. So it does not take as long as you would think. Okay. Now, if we were to teach it at the beginning of the year, it would probably take a little longer, but by that point, we've already taught um, adding and subtracting, and okay. so in teaching adding and subtracting, we always have to talk about the places. You start in your ones place, and then you move to your tens, and then your hundreds. So it's a build-up. Yes, exactly. Okay. Well, this exactly. is a great lesson. If, there's, if there is a... All right, let's, let's put you back into teacher mode, not that you were out of it. But if a child is having difficulty, where is it that, is there a common area or does it just depend on the, the child? Um, 
Well, going in, into our different forms, the hardest one they have trouble is the word form. The word. And that's a lot of it's just the spelling and writing what they hear. They really have to, we repeat it over and over again and make sure they stop when they hear a word. And I'll always have them count their words they hear too. Okay. So we'll say 642. So then when they write it, they need to make sure they have four words. Once they say it out loud, is it... Uh, are they comprehending it a little bit better if you say it out loud as opposed to reading or vice versa? Definitely saying it out loud, I would okay. say, for most of them. Okay, well, that's how I am. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an audio, not a... I'm visual. I have visual. to see it. I got you. All right. Well, what else you have for us this morning? Um, well, we can go through now and look at some of our lesson plans. Okay. If that's okay. Yes. Um, so this is a lesson plan we had last week and I was just wanting to show this but just to explain it a little better for some of those parents that are still confused by it because I know it's easy when I see it right. but, <laughs> but I'm the one working on it. Have you had good participation with your students? We have. Great. I've got um, almost my whole class on my Google Classroom oh, so it's been really great. How often do you, you guys meet? Once a week. Once a week. Yes. Now we do different stuff in the Google Classroom right, daily, right. but we do, we try to do our Google Meets at least once a week. All right, well and that's got, been really fun. We've uh, done some different things with that. Well, we got one minute left, so uh, take us down and show us what... Uh, okay, what um, we'll just look at this day one real fast then. Um, it's got our reading portion and then our math portions. So I like how it's broken up like that, real easy to see. And then for your reading, you've got the story. We've been using Storyline online a lot. Okay. And you've got your questions and then an activity to go with that. And they can choose one of those activities. And then on math, it has a video for that as well. And then your activities and a review activity for okay. that. So you're loading up the videos and then they go to the Google Classroom and download them and they can do their work there. They can, they can click it right off of this screen, so it makes it real easy. Were you already using Google Classroom prior? We were not okay. at our level, but I know some of the um, higher grades were. Okay. But at K2, we were not. So it's been a learning curve for all of us. I bet. And you're not learning in the classroom. Yes, but I will say I like it and I, I will probably use it when we get back to normal. I, I think uh, a lot of things that we've learned we're going to probably carry yes over. exactly so, well thank you so much for coming in and, and giving us this great lesson and teaching us new stories that, uh, <laughs> absolutely somehow some of us miss growing up or <laughs> in uh, my children's age and uh, wow that that was a lot of uh, interesting stuff you showed us with math and again thank you for preparing today's lesson and uh, I know Joyner's very proud of you and thanks for all you do for our district well, thank you all right, for uh, Ms. Demaran, I'm Greg Ellis here on Distance Learning 101. Have a great day, and we'll see you on our next episode.